Hi everyone, this is Alex Treviño, a 3D artist from Mexico. As a self-thought artist, I work on all sorts of projects using Blender and Substance Painter, and I want to share my process with you. I'm pleased to present the fourth part as we continue the Luna Rover series, and in this video I will show you how I texture the complete project. I highly recommend checking out the previous video in this series. I cover the UV unwrapping process, sharing tips and tricks for a uniform UV layout. The concept is the Luna Rover Vehicle by Matthias Sadolfsson, and if you want to see more of his work, check out his social media or his website. I will begin by laying down the foundation for creating simple materials. We will focus on three key elements, color, reflection, and height. By understanding these basics, we can give life to your 3D models and bring out the visual appeal. We explore techniques to get color variation, complex reflections, and subtle height variations to get a visual impact. The texture creation process relies on a systematic breakdown of colors. A minimum of three tones is essential. The mid-tone assumes the primary role. A darker tone accentuates shadows in areas of occlusion using an ambient occlusion generator mask. On the other hand, generate a lighter tone using the curvature generator mask that improves edge definition. While these techniques form the basics, adding more tones can amplify complexity and depth, enabling a more nuanced and visual appeal outcome. The roughness map takes center stage when creating complex reflections. This map works on a scale of values ranging from 0 to 1. A value of 0 means a highly reflective surface, while 1 represents a completely matte and non-reflective surface. I use a minimum of 3 tones to get the desired reflection effects. The middle tone is the primary reflection, providing an overall impression of the object's reflectivity. The lightest tone reduces reflection, like making scratches more apparent while darker tones amplify reflection in areas with a high degree of polish. Adding more tones can also improve the complexity of the reflection, so put as many as you need. The height map is crucial in introducing surface variations to the object. It operates from minus one to one, where values below zero indicate concave or depressed areas while values above zero represent convex or elevated areas. Masking plays an essential role in controlling texture application within Substance Painter. They rely on a grayscale map where zero represents black and indicates invisible areas, while one represents white and indicates visible areas. There are multiple methods for creating a mask. You can start with a white mask that applies the material in the complete tile set or a black mask excluding it. However, this is only the initial step. Layering is key to creating the desired mask and different methods can be employed. The first method involves selection, using polygon fill to select triangles, faces, objects, or UV islands. Next, custom brushes enable precise painting within designated areas. Fields can be used for applying patterns or textures. Generators like ambient occlusion, curvature, UV borders, and more offer additional options. Lastly, alphas. These are made in programs like Photoshop or Illustrator and then imported into Substance Painter. Layering these simple methods enable the creation of complex masks. We ensure accurate color representation and compatibility across different software by implementing ACES. ACES is a film industry standard that aims to maintain color consistency between different programs. And Substance Painter offers different ACES versions. I will use ACES 1.2 for this video, which aligns with Blender configuration called Oscar Blend. Now, to import a model into Substance Painter, we select the mesh, then specify the document's resolution, in this case 4K. For the normal map format, I opt for the OpenGL to ensure proper compatibility with Blender's normal maps. Lastly, in the color management settings, I switch from legacy to open color IO 
and select ACES 1.2 as the color space. Before starting the texturing process, it is necessary to perform a bake. While baking the entire project in one go is possible, I avoid extra memory consumption by doing one bake at a time. I select only the tileset I will work with and the output size to start the process. In this case, 4K. Now, I start the texturing process by focusing only on the character. The character's assets are divided into two 4K tilesets. I start with the visor and then apply a golden material while darkening the corners to enhance its visual appeal. Additionally, I introduce dirt elements using the roughness map. Moving to the helmet, I established a steel base material and added details using the height map. Next are the main pipes, where I select the proper color and roughness values. And with a mask, I incorporate a pattern of lines to introduce a visual interest. Shifting attention to the character's fabric parts, I introduce an orange palette. I darken the occluded areas while lightening the edges for added depth. Then use the height map to simulate a fabric texture. After that, I incorporate a layer of white paint in specific helmet areas. Additionally, I simulate corrosion using an ambient occlusion mask and integrate scratches to expose the metal material beneath the white paint layer. Moving on to the small wires, I create an opaque plastic material and add the small metal parts. Returning to the fabric, I create a custom alphas for the arm patch logo. After that, I focused on the elbow and knee pads, where I added a UV border distance generator to create a clear separation between two distinct areas. And in the inner side, I put a dotted pattern for added visual interest. For the gloves, I start with the fabric material and added height details and wrinkles for natural appearance. For the belt, the UV border distance generator establishes clear boundaries. Then I add a pattern of horizontal lines in the inner section. Lastly, I address the boots, painting a mask in adding a pattern of vertical lines on top and horizontal lines on the shoe sole. And I added an automatic stitch generator. With this, the character texturing process is finished and we are ready to move on to the rover. The texturing process for the rover begins with the chassis. A metallic material with a rough texture is applied a noise is added to the height map for the engine to create variation and add a new polished metal material. For many areas of the rover, I reused the white paint material from the character's helmet. And the most demanding part of the texturing process was creating the line patterns on the tires. Each area was painted separately to adjust the pattern's angle. I used a bread mega scan texture and added height details to the toaster. Then I split the console into two parts, white paint on the exterior and black paint for the instrument area. And alphas were used to add the text in white. The tanks start with a basic reflective metal material covered by white paint with additional details in the height map. Moving on to the seat, the same material as the chassis is used for the tubes. I put a metal material in the upper part of the batteries, while the lower part is a rough black plastic. I use the new paint along path to add height maps details for the briefcases. A fabric material was applied to the ribbons and the automatic stitch generator was used again. Height details variations were necessary for the transmission and the steering wheel to distinguish objects sharing the same materials. I added some finished touches to the gear shifter and robotic arms. I used triplanar projection to fix UV problems. Lastly, five types of cables were created and distributed. With this, the texturing process was finished. Now the final step is exporting the textured assets to use them within Blender. I create a preset to export all maps in EXR format with 16 bit. A great GPU was an absolute most for this part of the project. The addition of the NVIDIA 3080 Ti in my toolkit made a big difference. Speeding up material loading and reducing render times. 
The GPU capacity directly improved the quality of my artwork and play a significant role in the project. And with this, we have finished the texturing phase. Now we know how to make a basic material, how the roughness and height map works, and how to create a mask. In the following video, I will show you how I render the project using Blender and make the comp in Photoshop. Do not forget to join the community and showcase your talent by sharing your creations with the hashtag StudioShare. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more content like this, remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell and see you in the next video.